A blessed day to each and every one of us, and a heartfelt, warm welcome to all our Christian sisters and brothers participating in this week of prayer for Christian unity. This year's dream for our week of prayer is we saw the star in the east and we came to worship him. That's from Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. Its rich liturgy was prepared by the Council of Churches of the Middle East, the place where our Savior Christ was born. It seems that with this dream, we can still extend our Christmas celebration. The star of the east signifies hope. It guides us to the manger where the Savior is born. For all of us working for ecumenism, our star will guide us towards a common bond of love and unity. We can do this. We have already a glimpse of this when we made our common statement together, one ecumenical family. Christmas never ends for as long as we keep our days at this heart of love and service. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 13, verse 35. The price of the communism is high. We have to be humble to admit that we do not have the monopoly of the truth. We accept our differences, but rejoice in our commonality. Only then can we be enriched by each other. The French philosopher René Descartes, in his discourse on method in 1637, exclaimed, Cogito ego sum. I think, therefore, I am. For all of us journeying, working, and praying together towards unity, we can say, We go put omnes, onomsen, ergo sum, which means, I live for all, may live as one, therefore I am. May God continue to bless and protect us all through His Son Jesus Christ to work for His glory and our unity. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Grace and peace be with you. I also greet you on behalf of the National Council of Churches in the Philippines. This year, as we gather for the week of prayer for Christian unity, we come together under the theme, We Saw the Star in the East and We Came to Worship Him. This has been prepared by our sisters and brothers from the Middle East Council of Churches. The star appearing in the East points us to a search. In the Middle East and in many different places around the world today, even in our own country, there is search for peace. Rocked by violence and unpeace, we long for the dawning of true and lasting peace. The child being sought for by the Magi was revealed to be the Prince of Peace. This Prince of Peace once said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Oh, how we need to learn from him and his ways. The appearance of the star also shows us the world of darkness in need of illumination. The prophet Isaiah declared the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. In Jesus was life according to the Gospel of John, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We are challenged to let our light shine where darkness is rife, reflecting the true light, the Prince of Peace. 
The seekers of the light, when it finally pointed to Christ, brought out their gifts and shared. Coming together for a common search and sharing our gifts and giftedness are to my mind significant aims of the week of prayer for Christian unity. The search and sharing of light and gifts then leads to service. Upon seeing the Christ child, the Magi bowed down and worshipped him. To pay him homage is to serve Christ and Christ alone. There will be no other sovereign or Lord. There will be no returning to Herod, but going on through a new way, a different path from where we had previously trod. This week as we gather, and hopefully in all weeks thereafter, may we manifest our Christian unity through a common search for peace, through a community of sharing of our gifts and giftedness, and a commitment to service, serving the Lord and His people. To a fruitful and meaningful celebration of prayer and work for Christian unity, may the peace of the Trion God, three yet indivisibly one, be with you always. Please all stand in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are united today with fellow believers in four corners of the world as we gather to pray for the visible unity of the Church. We do this with worship resources prepared by the Middle East Council of Churches. Our texts are inspired by the visits of the Magi to the newborn king, as described in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We observe his star in the east, and we have come to pay him homage. Let us fix our eyes on the star that was seen in the east, and allow it to lead us to. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving and joy, bringing all the sick, the suffering, the marginalized, the refugees, and the uprooted before Him, knowing that God can dispel our darkness with His light. As we pray today for the unity of the Church, may we in our communities also be lights that guide others to Jesus the Savior. Glory be to you, Father Almighty. For you have revealed yourself through your creation and invited all people to stand in your presence. We have seen the star of Jesus in our lives and we have come to worship him just as the Magi did. We offer him ourselves today and we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Unite us with one another as we come from the north and from the south from the east and from the west, old and young, men and women to bow down before you and offer homings, our heavenly King, Amen.
prayer, praise and confession. We glorify you, O Lord, creator of heaven and earth, for you have set the lights in the vault of the sky. You separated light from darkness and arranged signs to mark sacred times and days and years. You studied the firmament with stars. How majestic are your works! The heavens declare your glory, and the skies proclaim the work of your hands. We glorify you, O Lord. We praise you, for you did not abandon us, despite our rebellion, but sent your Son to brighten our darkness and be our light and our salvation. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity, and the light shines in the darkness. We worship you, O Lord, for you accompany us in the chaos of our life through the power of the Holy Spirit. You light up our paths and give us wisdom and faith in a world of untruth and doubt. We worship you, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for you set us into the world to reflect this light around us. Nearby, diverse cultures, and to witness to Jesus, the one true King, offering ourselves to Him. We thank you, O Lord. Worship. Giving us light, therefore we come to you, confessing our sins in sin. We have separated people based on ethnicity, religion, and gender, and we have claimed Jesus on our side in any war we get. Forgive all these truths and deaths, O Lord, as we come before you in repentance. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom you have sent in the fullness of time to redeem all people, we ask you to, be, to have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and transform us into his glorious image so we can shine as a beacon of hope to our troubled hope world. Almighty God, hear our prayers. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. Thanks be to God, whom we praise with all our voices.
O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your truth to silence the enemy and the enemy. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yes, you have made them a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under your feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, o Lord our sovereign, sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. A light has risen for the inhabitants of the region of the shadow of death. You have increased the nation, but you have not increased the that. rejoicing. They will rejoice before you like those who rejoice at the harvest, like the victorious exulting after capturing the prey when they divide the spoils. For you have prevailed over the yoke of the burden, and over the rod of their shoulder, and over the scepter of their oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every violent plunder with tumult, and every garment mixed with blood, will be burned up and will become fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given and leadership is placed upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Father of the Future Age, Prince of Peace. His reign will be increased, and there will be no end to his peace. He will sit upon the throne of David, and over his, his kingdom to confirm and strengthen it in judgment and justice, from now even unto eternity. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall accomplish this. The second reading is taken from from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Oh, 
Apostle St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesian Church, chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. This is the word of the Lord. For you were in darkness in times past, but now you are light in the Lord. So then walk as the sons of the light. For the fruit of the light is in all goodness and justice and truth, affirming what is well-pleasing to God. And so have no fellowship with untruthful works of darkness, but instead refute them. For the things that are done by them in secret are shameful, even to mention. But all things that are disputed are made manifest by the light. Because of this, it is said, You who are sleeping, awaken, and rise up from the dead, and so shall the Christ in life. This is God's word. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And so when Jesus had been born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to adore him. Now King Herod, hearing this, was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him, and gathering together all the leaders of the priests and the scribes of the people. He consulted with them as to where the Christ would be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means less among the leaders of Judah. For from you shall go, for rulers of shall guide my people Israel. Then Herod, quietly calling the Magi, diligently learned from them the time when the star appeared to them, and sending them into Bethlehem, and said, Go and diligently ask questions about the boy, and when you have found him, report back to me, so that I too may come and adore him. And when they heard the king, they went away. And behold, the star they had seen in the east went before them, even until arriving. It stood still about the place where the child was. Then seeing the star, they were gladdened by a very great joy. And entering home, they found the boy with his mother Mary. And so, failing prostrate, they adored him. And opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having received a response in sleep that they should not return to Herod, they went back to the, by another way to their own region. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be seated. And now let us uh, prepare ourselves for the healings of the words of God by Bishop Socrates Simisiona, Vicar, Apostolic of Puerto Princesa, the Roman Catholic Church. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. 
we are gathered together this afternoon to celebrate the week of prayer for Christian unity with the theme, We saw a star in the east and we came to worship him. The theme, taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, is about the epiphany of our Lord. As such, we recall the time when God revealed Himself not only to the Jews, but also to the Gentiles, as represented by the three Magi who were guided by a shining star. Traditionally, the Magi are believed to come from the East, probably either from Persia, since the name Magi originated there, or Babylonia because of the knowledge of the star, or Arabia because of the gifts which are often found there. But wherever, but wherever from the East they came from, the fact is, they were seeking to meet the newborn Messiah. Guided only by a shining star, they found the baby Jesus in a house in the town of Bethlehem. Probably it happened a few days after Jesus was born because Matthew did not mention a manger, but a house. They must have already transferred to a house after giving birth of Jesus in a manger. And as soon as they found him, they offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold to acknowledge Jesus' kingship, frankincense for his divinity, and myrrh for his burial as part of the fulfillment of his mission. God's epiphany to the three Magi reminds us that His gift of salvation is not only for a few select group of people, but for everyone who believes in Him. The, the epiphany therefore tells us of the universality of God's gift of salvation. It is because God desires all to be saved and share in His divine life. Therefore, our gathering together this afternoon, even if we come from different Christian traditions, is a great manifestation of our belief that salvation is indeed an offer from God to everyone. No one can say, I am better than them, or I have the chance to be saved than you, because of my group affiliation. God wants all of us to be saved. Paano ito mangyayari na meron naman po talaga tayong pagkakaiba ay hindi ko din lubos na may papaliwanag. But God has His own way that's even beyond our limited mind to fully grasp when He sent His only Son to be our Savior. It may be hard for us to fathom this great mystery, but we know God can write straight in crooked lines. My experience for the past four years joining this group tells me that each of us, even with our imperfections, are deeply loved by God. Because we are each loved by God, there is also goodness and kindness in each of us, which is a concrete sign of God's revealing presence in every one of us. There is common humanity in each of us that surpasses our own differences, whatever they may be. The Magi's search for the baby Jesus can also be the model of our own search for God. No, I'm not saying that we are at the moment lacking in faith, but I am simply referring to our own human struggle to find tangible and concrete experience of encounter with God in our lives. Isn't it part of our human experience to even question God's existence, especially when we are in crisis, 
or misfortune? We have just experienced a super typhoon, typhoon so strong that many lost their houses, livelihood, and even lives. In this situation, we cannot but make a hard question about God's presence or even His existence. Nasaan ang Diyos? Nasaan ka, Panginoon? Tinutulugan mo lang ba kami? We ask when we are tested and tried by life's challenges. But I hope that our questioning is just the start of a spiritual quest that would lead us to exert effort like the Magi to even seek and find deeply, find Him deeply. For that is what the Magi did. They traveled from a far away place to seek the Messiah. We need not be learned and educated to know Jesus because the Pharisees and teachers of the law were the learned and educated people during Jesus' time, but did not recognize and see Him. It took simple people like the shepherds and the Magi from a far away place to encounter Jesus. But like the Magi, we need to be guided by the star if we sincerely and truly seek the Lord in our life. To be guided by the star would mean to look up to heaven for divine guidance, which is in fact an act of faith itself. The star may be the Holy Spirit's inspiration using signs and instruments, like people, holy people who can guide us in our spiritual journey. But let us be aware also that in our spiritual journey of seeking the Lord, there are people who have evil intentions, as represented by Hiran, who has no other motive than their own selfish interest. While God wants us all to be saved, there are people who are stumbling, stumbling blocks to God's desire for universal salvation. They can be those who pretend to follow us, join us to also worship the Lord, but in reality, they would only use us for their own end. Let us be aware and get rid of them because they can ruin and jeopardize our search for God in our life. Let us be very discerning because they can offer momentary comfort and pleasure to entice and deceive us for their own agenda as they can be people of influence and power their strategy is even to divide us. They can be people who seem to be so pious in public, but can be ruthless like Herod in dealings with other people, even to his own kin. They are wolves in sheep's skin. Today we are reminded in our theme of the gracelessness of God by revealing himself to be good the God of all. May we respond to his invitation to encounter him as he reveals himself to us in many different ways, like in the scripture, in the liturgy, in the people we encounter in our life, and many occasions and opportunities. But as soon as we encounter the Lord, let us also take note that this encounter challenges us to make a decision to change course in our life's direction. For it is said that after we encounter the Lord, we cannot go back to the same route of life that we follow. We have to change course. For our encounter with the Lord demands a new way of life. It is a life transformed by the light of Christ. Thus we cannot say, life as usual when we encounter and experience God's unconditional love. We cannot but be born anew in the Holy Spirit and live in the image and likeness of God. Brothers and sisters, today, as we celebrate the week of prayer for Christian unity, we are invited to encounter 
to experience and to know Jesus deeply so that by doing so, we become also a guiding stars for others. A meaningful coming together for the week of prayer for Christian unity. God bless us all. Please all stand. Let us recite the National Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not me, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, whom with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
a star led the Magi to Christ. Today, this star points to the presence of Christ who has been revealed to us and whose light shines on us. As the Magi followed the star to Bethlehem, we gather under this star today, adding our own star to the sky, uniting our own gifts and prayers for the visible unity of the Church. As we journey towards that goal, may our lives together give a luminous witness that leads Christ to know Christ others. Let us all stand as the leaders may pin the stars of the blue mountain. We come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Magi came from the East to pay homage and offer special gifts from the cultures and countries. We pray today for Christian communities around the world in all of their diversity of worship and tradition. Lord, we ask you to preserve these treasures particularly in areas of the world where the presence and survival of Christians is threatened by violence and oppression. O Lord, hear our prayer. The early Christians of the Lord's life were marked by violence and massacres at the orders of the Duke of Herod. We pray for children living in places in the world where violence continues and where its results are tangible. Strengthen us, O Lord, the bands of unity and mutual love among our churches and help us to cooperate and witness your holy name. Inspire us to work without ceasing in order to defend the oppressed and include the marginalized. Encourage us to stand together 
in the face of tyranny and oppressive regimes as we seek your kingdom among us. O Lord, hear our, our Father, we pray for our fellow men who are devastated by recent days of death in Palawan. Surround them without prayer or strength. Bless those who have survived and heal their memories of trauma and devastation. May they have the courage to face the long road of rebuilding ahead. We lift up to you our concern for people at high risk of becoming severely ill from COVID-19 virus, the elderly and people with chronic health condition, protect them from the virus and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty and for many preventive isolation from loved ones. O oh Lord, oh Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayer. For now let us pray for the national concern. Let us let pray, pray that the forthcoming national, national election may truly reflect the will the of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver, Deliver us, us Lord. Lord, from coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, from dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, from bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, from liability, deceptive, and blindness of perspective, from threats, intimidation, and perverse language, let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. That the conscience may always be our ultimate norm. That the common good may always be our highest goal. That human dignity may be respected all the time. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. That care of creation may never be ignored. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. After a visit of the Magi, the Holy Family experienced migration through the wilderness and become refugees in the land of Egypt. We pray for all the refugees and uprooted people in this world. Equip us, Lord, to show hospitality to those driven from their homes and grant us a spirit of welcome to those looking for a safe heaven. O Lord, o Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. The birth of Jesus was good news for all gathering people from different nations and religions in worship of the Holy Child. We pray for our efforts to seek harmony and dialogue with other religions. Lord, give us humility and patience to walk with others with respect on their journey. O oh Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. The Magi return to their home by a different way. We pray for our churches in this changing world. Lord, help us to find new and creative ways to follow you, to witness to you, so that the world may believe. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. When the Magi saw the Holy Child, they rejoiced with great joy. Heavenly Father, fix our eyes on Him so we do not lose our way. Unite us in the Lord Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and who has taught us to pray, saying,
that that's all we see that that you sing him or him with three kings Grace be with all who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's be seated. And now it's a uh, moment of acknowledgement for each church, participating church, by uh, Father Pipito. I would like to acknowledge the presence and participation of the different church members of this Palawan Ecumenical Fellowship. Uh, pag tinawag po ang church, tumayo po at kasama yung mga members na nandito sa, sa harap. Ang number one po ay ang Iglesia Methodist, Methodista ng Pilipinas. Bahay number two, Bahay Faith. Pre-Confederation of Jesus Christ Believers and Ministers Incorporated. For the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. Number five, the Iglesia Filipina Independiente. Number six, the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> and number seven, Salvation Army. Number eight, San Jose Baptist Church. Number nine, the United Church of Christ in the Philippines. And last but not the least, huh? the United Methodist Church. So, thank you very much for your presence, for your participation in this, our yearly activity, our uh, prayer for Christian unity. Hopefully next year, we will gather again together for another celebration and for other celebrations that involves fellowship of ecumen uh, ecumenical fellowship. Thank you very much. Now let's hear our parting hymns. <laughs> 